Hi, I'm David Stone. I'm a potter and a teacher at Still Life Ceramic Studios. And I'm safer at home. Um, today I wanted to demonstrate um, my process for throwing a plate. I'm going to be throwing a plate about somewhere between 10 and 12 inches in diameter, but the process translates to pretty much any size plate you're going to want to do. Um, from a 4 inch to a 28 inch uh, platter. Um, so give me a second to get set up. I'm going to bring the camera down to my hands and like all of my lessons I will just demonstrate and talk through the process. Alright? Thanks. Okay, so I am starting obviously with uh, my clay already centered. Um, I just basically I want to keep these videos to under 20 minutes if I possibly can. So my clay is centered. Um, when I'm centering for a plate or a platter, I'm going to tend to to center a little a little wider and a little flatter than than I normally would for a standard uh, a standard form. Um, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna refine this centering just a little bit. I'm just gonna just kind of move it out to here. Okay. So now what I'm gonna do is instead of instead of actually putting a hole in here and opening the way I normally do. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to I'm just going to come in here with my with my left hand and I'm just going to start pressing with the palm of my hand straight down. See that? See how I've kind of got that sort of curve now started? So I'm I'm just going to continue to do that and I can do it you know I, I do it with either hand. The other thing is I want to make sure that I'm keeping whatever outside hand is that I have in contact with the clay. Okay? So I'm just going to go ahead and press down. And I'm just I'm going to use my palm to 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 make my opening as opposed to my fingers, okay? Like this part of my hand is where I'm going to be pushing from. And I'm just going to gently sort of push out. I'm going to try and push out my bottom to about I'd like to get it out to the edge of my bat, but I don't think I don't think I have enough clay for that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make this a much smaller plate than I had planned. I think I'm just gonna push this out to And you can see the plate's already sort of starting to, to show up, right? You can see it's already basically becoming a plate. I'm just going to push this out. Okay. I'm going to stop right there. Okay. And you can see now this is basically already kind of a plate now. Um, I would just maybe need to thin out this lip a little bit. I mean it's as simple as that. Um, the one thing I want to check, I want to make sure to check on my depth. So I'm going to, when, I, when I'm throwing a plate I'd like to leave at least a half an inch of clay at the bottom because I'm going to trim a foot on there and I want to make sure there's enough material for me to do that. Um, I also, if you notice, I'm throwing on a plaster bat, um, which uh, 
I find is advantageous for uh, for plates and platters because you don't have to cut them off with a wire tool as the plaster absorbs the water from the clay body the piece will just pop off all on its own so um, so I can actually be a little bit thinner in my bottom than, than if you were working on a plastic bat where you had to cut your cut your piece off um, because when you cut it off you're gonna you're going to find that you're gonna um, leave us a, a decent amount of clay on the on the surface of the bat so you should probably leave at least a half an inch of, of material all right so let's check this so yeah that's a, a little it's a little below a half an inch I'd say pretty close to a half an inch which I think is perfect okay so let's uh, just get this kind of so the other thing that I think is super important when you're working on a on a plate is you want to make sure that your that your horizontal surface, that your plate surface, is is very very compressed, right? So you're going to have to compress your plate really well. And I'm going to use a I'm going to use a rib to do that. Um, the other thing that I'd like to to maintain in all of my plates is just a, a the slightest little bit of a dome. I don't want it to be completely flat. Um, if there's a little bit of a dome, you'll find that it'll keep the the plate from later on as it as it dries from kind of warping up or 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 warping in, in general. Um, and here's another little tidbit that when you're drying a flat surface like this, especially a large flat surface. It needs to dry very, 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 very slowly. So you have to keep it covered and be, you know, be ready for to let this plate dry for well over a week, um, possibly two weeks. Just keep it very slow, um, because you'll if you don't, you'll you, it you could end up with uh, either an S crack or it could warp in the firing. Or it could develop some hairline cracks that'll open up once it once it starts to fire because the you know this area here out here is going to dry super fast right and this area here is going to dry super super slow and as this dries it shrinks and it creates all these incredible stresses on the clay body that will come out la later on in life it's like you know raising a child if you screw it up when it's young it'll end up coming back to bite you when you're old, when he's older. All right, so I'm just going to find a rib that fits the size that I'm that I'm working on, um, which this looks about right. And I'm just going to come in with my rib, and I'm just going to let it spin. And you're going to see I'm going to be collecting a certain amount of clay on the back of my rib. I'll show you in a second. All right, so that's okay. I'm just, but I, 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 I'm not using a lot of pressure, but I'm definitely pressing because I want to compact that clay down really well. And what I'm trying to do is get this sort of nice flat surface, and I'm pressing a little bit more in the center. I'm keeping it at a very, 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 very tiny angle so I can maintain that kind of concave surface, right? So here we go again. letting it spin. Let the wheel do the work. Alright, there you have it. Okay, so now the next thing I want to deal with is is this transition, right, from my horizontal surface to my first vertical surface. And what, I, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do like a like this horizontal surface to a slight, to an angled vertical surface, and then maybe another flat horizontal surface. Okay, so now I just want to work on this transition between my flat surface and my my first horizontal surface. And again, I'm going to use a rib for that. And what I need to do is just find a rib that has sort of a curve that that I'm going to like, uh, that's going to work well for me. So. 
something like that could work nicely. Um, that could work pretty nicely. I think I'm going to go with that. Okay. So what I'm going to do is again, I'm just going to I'm just going to bring my rib in, and I'm going to keep a little bit of a little bit of pressure on the outside here. Just let the wheel spin and do the work. Don't rush this. The wheel will do all the work for you. Just sort of relax and mellow into the process. Okay, boom. There we go. That's nice, right? See that nice sort of transition from the flat to the to the next vertical surface. All right. So now my last little bit here is. I want to thin out my, my thin out this this area here, and I want to make us a little bit of a a little bit of a, another vertical surface off off of I mean another little horizontal surface off of this vertical surface. So to do that, I'm just going to compress this clay. Just like that. Okay, and I want to keep in mind all these relationships, right? Um, just in terms of functionality and, and in terms of uh, the aesthetics of, uh, of how it looks, right? Like right now I'm looking at this and, and I feel that this is too, is too narrow. This, this surface needs to be bigger. So I'm just going to work that out just a tiny bit more. feels pretty good. So a couple of things that you really need to be aware of um, is first of all you want to leave a decent amount of clay at the lip, right? Um, it's just going to help to strengthen strengthen the, the, the plate. Um, it's also going to help to keep keep the plate round and keep it from warping. Okay? Um, and just uh, you just want to kind of be be wary of all of these these sort of transitions from the flat to the vertical to the next sort of flat. Uh, I'm just gonna a little bit more. Okay. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. And you can see it was it was a it was pretty a pretty simple process, right? I mean, it wasn't it wasn't that difficult to do. I mean, it's intimidating. They're intimidating plates generally can be intimidating. The last thing I want to do is just kind of finish up this surface in here. Um, I'm not worried about any of that, those swirls or anything like that. I'm just more, much more concerned about all these transitions, right? I want to make sure all those transitions are nice and smooth. That looks pretty good. I'll just get rid of that one little dot in the middle of my plate. All right. So there you go. That's like... Uh, it's about a nine inch plate, um, which will shrink up probably to about a six inch plate. Um, so it'll be good for, I don't know, salad or something. Uh, hope you enjoyed this demo. Um, I'll chat in a second. Okay. Hope you enjoyed that video, um, that demonstration. A um, couple of things to keep in mind. Um, for that plate, I used about a pound and a half of clay, uh, maybe closer to two pounds, but about a pound and a half, I think. Um, 
So you can just kind of extrapolate out from there. If you were going to do more of like a 10 inch or 12 inch plate, you might want to use two and a half, three pounds of clay. Um, also, uh, just uh, another, just I want to reiterate a couple of things. Um, number one, right, um, center your piece so it's a little flatter than you would normally center. Um, watch, be very careful of your transitions. Make sure they're nice and smooth and find it a rib that's going to suitable, suitable to do that. Um, compress the bottom. That's super important. Okay, So make sure that you do a really good compression down there. Just let the wheel spin, pressure, and give it a good minute, minute and a half of of actual compression down there just to compress those particles and increase the strength. Remember to leave a little excess clay around the the lip of your plate, the rim, so that uh, you keeps it, it'll help, really help keep it round. And just be very patient with your drying. Really that's very important. Just let it dry very very slowly um, just to avoid any kind of stress being created throughout the entire uh, cross section of the plane. All right, um, thanks so much for watching and uh, remember to revel in your process. Don't focus on your peace. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to others.